with any sort of game, there's always going to be problems both gameplay-wise and experience-wise. Now, I don't really want to talk about the gameplay um, problems with Yu-Gi-Oh, although there are some. Uh, today, I actually want to focus on some mild inconveniences, and let's clarify what that means. So, there are, of course, going to be super annoying things, like when your opponent, uh, I don't know, smells terrible or, or shows up drunk to the match. Stuff that's like a huge inconvenience to you, and it's super annoying and basically ruins the whole match. Um, that's not what we're talking about. Today's video, I wanted to go through some inconveniences that you don't want to happen and that are kind of annoying, but you're not going to like quit the game over them. Maybe you will. I don't know. I probably wouldn't quit the game over these. Now, uh, the sample size that I've collected these from, not, not to sound official or anything, I've just, uh, these are things I've noticed at locals and regionals mainly, also at YCS's a little bit. Um, and I've also asked my friends if they had any input on this list. Uh, I think these are all pretty funny, uh, mild inconveniences. So let's get started with the one that made me want to make this video in the first place. And that is whenever a monster has 50 attack as uh, the last value. Um, the most recent examples of this are probably Fairy Tail Snow and I suppose like Luster Pendulum. But plenty of monsters over the years have come along with 50, a mul with 50 as the last number in their attack points, and it is always just so annoying. Um, the 50 attack might not seem like a big deal, but considering how Yu-Gi-Oh players are um, encouraged to use paper and pen for their life points, uh, that multiple can throw a lot of people off. And uh, obviously you don't know everyone's education background, um, but maybe math wasn't their strong suit, and I'd say that a lot of people rely on their calculators a lot in Yu-Gi-Oh! So if you're forced to use paper and pen like you're supposed to, um, that 50 can be really annoying. And I've actually seen multiple times... Just at regionals, though, um, people that got, like, attacked for, like, let's say 150 damage, they just round up to 200, even though, like, that hurts them in the long run. I mean, that, that hurts them in the long run because if, they're, if let's say your opponent does 7,950 7, damage over the course of a game, if you've rounded up, you're actually just dead now because it's 8,000. Um, and it also obviously matters every time the monster attacks because now you've taken, if it attacks twice and does damage, you've now taken a hundred more damage than you were supposed to. And uh, that's a bad idea. Don't, don't round up. Um, but that's, that's the one that made me want to make this video. Uh, the next one that I have is then when neither player, so you or your opponent, uh, brought dice. So you have to ask people around you for dice. Now, maybe you all don't have social anxiety, but for some people that do have that, that can be really annoying and sort of um, daunting actually to like ask other people for dice. And even though there's always the option of doing rock, paper, scissors, then you have to like I don't know. I feel like rock, paper, scissors isn't random enough. Um, and obviously some people do like an extra step. They do rock, paper, scissors, shoot. While some people just do rock, paper, scissors and then have the, the rock down. But uh, yeah, asking people for dice isn't fun. It's kind of embarrassing. Both you and your opponent look like idiots. And uh, yeah, it's, it's mildly inconvenient. The next one that I had is that when both players have the exact same sleeves. Now, this <laughs> might may or may not be a problem for you depending on what kind of sleeves you use if you're using like player choice whites or the hyper matte um blacks those are both very popular maybe even now with the um eclipse sleeves that ultra pro is making uh, but any sort of popular brand of sleeves you're gonna run into uh maybe even several times across the course of a tournament uh people that have the exact same color and style of sleeves in you and this is annoying because every time you both set your decks down for um cutting them before the game starts there's always that little part of you that thinks is this really my deck and there's no good way to check it right um assuming both of your sleeves look exactly the same you're playing, both playing 40 card decks you can't just pick up and look at the bottom card of the deck because then like it would give away what your opponent is playing so you just have to sort of hope that you picked up the, the right deck um and kept track of where you're putting it but uh yeah i that's like yeah, that's really annoying. It's just, I don't like that. So the, the way to avoid this is just to play uh, lime green sleeves at every single event. The next one is that when you know you have a card, usually a common card or a rare card, but you can't remember where you put it. Now, I know lots of Yu-Gi-Oh players have a ton of different deck boxes and storage cases for their cards, and you probably have a good idea of what types of cards you have or if you have a couple copies of something, but then when you really need it, boy, you just can't find it. No matter where you look, 
no matter how many deck boxes you go through, no matter how many thousands of cards you peek through, you're like, I can't find this. This is even more frustrating when the card you're looking for is one that you're trying to sell because it recently price jumped. I know that uh, this happened a ton with Vanity's Emptiness, a common that people just didn't use for years outside of a very few fringe examples. Um, and then suddenly it's $50 and everyone is going through all their cards trying to find their old Star Strike Blast commons. And uh, that's not fun, especially if you ended up not finding it. And uh, what do you do at that point? Even if the card hasn't increased in price, it's really annoying having to pay for something that you know you have. Um, I know this happened with like Skull Servants for me where like I had to buy normal monster Skull Servant for like $3 each when like I'm sure if I looked through like my thousands of cards I probably could have found a couple Skull Servants from like back when I was playing as a kid and it's just like annoying that you have to that you know you have a card and there's no yeah there's ways to organize them but some people like me are just so um, deep into their their unorganized life that they definitely have no um, it's, it's at this point organizing organizing my collection would be like a, a week long project where I didn't do anything else, and uh, ain't no one got time for that. So, yes, when you know you have a card but you can't find it, it's pretty inconvenient. It's mildly inconvenient. Um, the next one that I had is that when you forget to bring an extra deck box to an event, so you have nowhere to put your entry packs now. The I, I will make the, the caveat here that sometimes you do have extra deck boxes, they're just full with other cards. Um, now when you go to an event, a regional specifically, um, when you enter you're given 5 packs, that's 45 cards you have to deal with. It's basically another main deck that you have to deal with, and obviously it fits a small area because it doesn't have sleeves on it. And uh, you can always put like the, the high value cards into your binder. Hopefully you bought a binder to the event. But uh, boy, there's not like a good spot if you didn't bring an extra deck box to put those like 40 cards that aren't hollows. And it's like, I know for a fact at multiple events, I have actually purchased like crappy throwaway ultra pro deck boxes that are like two bucks just to put the entry packs in them. And another thing I see happen a lot is that people ask like, all of their friends if they have like spare room in their deck boxes and then what happens after like a couple months of going to regionals is that everyone has like entry packs from their friends just like in their backpack in various deck boxes and it's just it's a mess and like yes you can leave the commons on the tables if you want to give them up but i mean you paid for them and there's always going to be like some good commons like you don't want to put down like a, a gofu or something maybe that's like the, the most modern example like gofu or like ram ram or maybe zodiac whiptail where there's cards that like aren't really high valued but like you don't want to fall into the, the the problem from earlier where you know that you have them but you don't know where they are you, you i'd hate to put down a ram ram and then later on have to like purchase a ram ram online like that's just ridiculous that you'd have to pay money for like a common card that you pulled out of your entry packs that's why you shouldn't leave your entry packs at events you should take them home um but yeah that's yeah it's whatever uh, the next one is having to buy two packs of sleeves for decks that are more than 40 cards. Uh, most sleeves either come in 55 packs or hopefully 60 packs or 60 card packs. And it's like, there's sometimes when you, if you're playing like a 50 card deck, not, you have to buy two packs of sleeves because you need enough for not only your main deck, but also your side deck. And yes, you could unside your, or you could unsleeve your side deck and are right, supposed to use different sleeves to your side deck. Um, that's garbage. Don't do that. It's a terrible idea. Um, I would, I don't know, just buy more sleeves. Just buy a second pack of sleeves. But it's still annoying. And uh, with some lower quality sleeves, or just, it happens with standard, um, like, PC whites and Ultra Pro ones as well sometimes. Uh, sometimes, between two packs of sleeves, they are just ever so slightly miscut. And while that might not seem like a big idea, if you use, like, let's say you bought 60 sleeves and your deck's 50 cards. Um, so now you have 50 of those 60 in your main deck, 10 of them in the side deck, and then five extra from another pack in your side deck that are differently sized. Yeah, that counts as marked cards unless you can prove that you did it by accident, and uh, good luck with that. So yeah, when you get two packs that are miscut, I don't know if that counts as another uh, one on the list of mildly inconvenient things, but it's, it's just another add-on to the already annoying part of having to buy two packs of sleeves for one deck. And lastly, and this one might be my biggest pet peeve, at any event, and it's almost a huge inconvenience, um, when there's only room for 80% of your mat on the table. Uh, I don't know about the spacing issues that you guys have at regionals or YCSs, 
But sometimes at the lower tables and even at the higher tables, uh, given some circumstances, uh, there's not enough room for you to fully put out your setup. You know, you got your mat, you got your calculator, you got your pen and paper that you can't multi do subtractions of 50s by. Um, you got lots of things on there, and you have probably a ritual of how you set things up. Um, well, at some events, there's not enough room for that, so you only fit about 80% of your mat. So maybe you got to put your calculator on the table, but you got to put your calculator case that you spent so much money on back into your backpack. You got to put your deck box back in your backpack. And it's just annoying. I want a room for 110% of my mat. You know what I'm saying? I want room for my mat. I want all my stuff on it, and I want my deck box on the table. That's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, and then you have to awkwardly debate with the people next to you about, like, okay, the more expensive mat should probably go over the less expensive mat in terms of who uh, gets to have their mat fully on the table, but not everyone uh, will follow that, so that's kind of tough. But, uh, yeah, use 94 grays if you want to make sure your mat is always sprawled out for the whole uh, table like a tablecloth. Uh, anyway, though, these are some mild inconveniences in Yu-Gi-Oh!, Hopefully you guys enjoyed my list. I thought this was really fun to come up with. If I missed any or if you have any additions to make the ones I did say, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye.